What if Reva Savander decided to train the young Luke Skywalker rather than try to kill him during and following the sixth episode of the Obi-Wan Kenobi series? How would the galaxy as a whole be changed by this massive change of events? In this What If story, I will be taking a look at the potential timeline that would be created should Reva have made this choice. One thing that is different about this story is that I will be narrating it as an overview of the larger story rather than a narrative telling, just to spice things up a bit. With all that out of the way, we shall begin. In this timeline, we would pick up to the moment where Reva is preparing to kill the now unconscious Luke Skywalker. This is the moment where she should have felt victory. She should have been strong enough to do what must be done. Yet she hesitates. Why does she hesitate? All Reva can feel is immense pain, both physical and mental. She sees herself and the child, scared, weak, destined for suffering, his life being stolen away from him just as hers was. This is when she has a revelation, her conflict boiling to a breaking point, as she begins to sense the raw, untamed power within the boy. Reva initially is afraid of that power, wanting to destroy it and get back at Vader. She also thinks of another potential way, to strike back at the Dark Lord. Luke wields power. Power he can't control yet. If Reva were to properly train Luke in the ways of the dark side, he could grow to become exponentially powerful. Maybe even powerful enough to fight and kill Vader, so that they could rule the Empire together. Reva ultimately chooses to spare the child and carries him back to her ship as they leave Tatooine. Obi-Wan would return to Tatooine not long after Reva left as he finds Owen and Beru calling out to find Luke. Obi-Wan helps them search, but to no avail. Luke has been taken. Obi-Wan is fueled by stress, frustration, and grief. In trying to save one of the Skywalker twins, he managed to lose the other one. This one Inquisitor managed to be the potential downfall of all he, Bale, and Yoda did to try and save the galaxy. This wasn't over. It couldn't be over. Not yet. Obi-Wan realizes that his mission is far from over, as he promises to Owen and Beru that he will find Luke and bring him home. Obi-Wan returns to his starship and blasts off into hyperspace, sending a message to Bail Organa and telling him that Luke has been taken by the same Inquisitor that took Leia. Bail promises to send out some rebel spies to try and locate the missing Inquisitor. Obi-Wan agrees to help search as he shuts off the transmission, now burdened by the stress of the situation. Unlike with Leia, now there are no leads on Luke's location. He is truly missing. Back on Reva's ship, Luke awakes to see Reva staring at him. Young Luke begins to panic, asking where Uncle Owen and Aunt Beru were, and where were the Tusken Raiders? Reva lies and says that the Raiders had killed Owen and Beru. She then claims that she had saved Luke when he was unconscious, when she sensed his connection to the Force. Luke cries in sorrow and Reva snaps him out of it, telling Luke that now he is safe and that she is his only hope, and he is her only hope. She asks Luke some basic questions about the Force. If you ever saw things before they happened, felt a strange energy within. Luke admits that he often had weird dreams, sometimes seeing things before they happen. Reva explains to Luke that what he was experiencing was the Force. Reva explains to Luke that the Force is a powerful weapon, an energy field that can be used in battle, and that Luke possesses an immense connection to it. Reva also reveals that she is a Force wielder and tells Luke that she can train him in the ways of the Force. She also continues manipulating Luke by telling him that he has nowhere else to go and that this may be the only path he has left. Luke sobs before agreeing to stay with Reva as Reva promises him that she will train him and make him into a powerful, powerful weapon. Meanwhile, Obi-Wan continues to search for Luke, staying hidden but doing everything in his power to find the boy. Bale's spies had also been hard at work, but ultimately, they were at a dead end, and there was no way to properly find Luke. 
the boy had been officially lost. That is when Obi-Wan and Bale decide to re-meet. Bale apologizes for not being able to find Luke, but Obi-Wan tells Bale that it isn't his fault, and says that now Leia may be the only hope for the galaxy, if Luke is truly gone. Bale says that he doesn't want to force Leia into that life, and Obi-Wan agrees, saying it's something that Leia must decide for herself. Obi-Wan reunites with Leia as he, Bale, and Bria all go to her and tell her about her Force abilities. They explain that this is why she senses emotions and thoughts and sees things before they happen. Obi-Wan tells Leia that he would be willing to train her how to use these powers for good, but Leia would get the final decision. Leia would agree, although she would also want to help her father with the rebellion and stay with her family. Obi-Wan would agree to allow Bale and Bria to continue to raise her, while he would come around a few times a month to teach Leia about the Force, training her as the new hope for the galaxy. We then cut back to Reva training Luke. We see that Reva is quite brutal in her lessons, and we see that Luke has clearly been wounded by this intense training. He asks Reva why she's so mean to him, why she's hurting him like this. Reva admits that she's trying to train Luke as intensely as possible. She tells Luke that the training he has accepted is difficult and painful, because it has to be. Reva then reveals that she is training Luke to, quote-unquote, protect him against a powerful force wielder named Darth Vader. She explains that Darth Vader is an incredibly powerful force wielder who conquers worlds for the Empire and hunts down their kind without mercy. She promises to train Luke to his fullest potential so that one day they can kill Vader together and bring peace and order back to the galaxy. We get a long time jump of about two to three years. Luke has been trained under Reva intensely. He has been taught many dark force powers and now wields the second half of Reva's lightsaber as his own blade. He has been trained to kill as Reva begins slowly trying to target the Empire motivating Luke with the promise to destroy Vader. Luke is taught through great pain and suffering. Reva is nothing but cruel and brutal in her lessons. Luke has toughened up quite a bit, and has even become very spiteful and cruel, although he isn't quite a Sith. Reva would now be becoming more ambitious in her strikes against the Empire, as she and Luke begin targeting Imperial bases and squads of troopers. Eventually, however, this would soon catch the attention of the Empire, a rogue inquisitor and a force-sensitive apprentice. Soon, Reva would have a bounty placed on her head by the Empire, as she and Luke are forced to go underground. They would attempt to go off the grid for a while, however, the Empire would track Reva down to a planet and send their forces to kill her and her apprentice, deploying several squads of Storm and Purge troopers along with the Grand Inquisitor and the Fifth Brother. Reva and Luke would fight back for a time, as Luke engages several groups of stormtroopers, while Reva faces off against the Grand Inquisitor and the Fifth Brother. While the two would fight well, eventually, Reva would be overpowered by the two Inquisitors, as the Grand Inquisitor finally kills her by decapitating her. During this fight, Luke would choose to flee with his life, although now he is a wanted man by the Empire. Luke would have changed his name on Reva's orders, since the last name Skywalker would be quite the big target for Vader if they were ever to be found out. So, let's just say Luke changes his name to Jake Starkiller. The Empire now chases after Jake Starkiller and places a bounty on his head as the apprentice of a traitor to the Empire. Luke would continue to stay underground, killing anyone who got in his way. Eventually, Luke would be found and rescued by someone he did not expect. Saw Guerrera. Saw would recruit Luke as an agent of his partisans, and Luke would then be trained by Guerrera for up until adulthood as a rebel agent. Luke would be taught how to kill in every form someone could be killed, being trained in the use of blasters, Vibroblades, knives, grenades, and even just his bare hands and feet. Luke would also apply his vibroblade training to his lightsaber skills to be an even more dangerous fighter. During this time, Luke would also create a connection with Jin Erso, 
who Saw Gerrera was also raising, and the two could even grow an attachment for one another. Luke's rage towards the Empire would only increase as he became a ruthless extremist and a member of Saw Gerrera's rebel partisans. Later, Saw would abandon Jin as his way of protecting her, which would create some tension between him and Luke. Ultimately, however, despite their disagreements, they both shared a common enemy in the Empire, and would ultimately continue to work together. During this time, Obi-Wan would have been sporadically training Leia as his new apprentice, and the two would have formed a very strong bond. Obi-Wan would give her Anakin's former lightsaber for her to claim as her own. She would have become very skilled with the Force during this time, and with a lightsaber. And she would also continue her focus as a senator and a rebel agent, being the perfect balance of both her mother and her father. We would get another time gap, all the way up until the year 0 BBY, as both Luke and Leia continue on their separate rebel journeys and their fights against the Empire. But now the Empire has finished the Death Star, and a new threat to the galaxy has just revealed itself.